Um, is there a case to start Marcus Sasser next to Kate Cunningham? I think right now, tomorrow, it should happen. Until Monte Morris is back, and then I think he's probably the better option. Till Boyan's back, who's the better option? It becomes, you know, a health situation. But I, th- I think Sasser, and I do, again, understand for where Monte Williams is coming from, where it's like, you don't necessarily want to shake up the starting lineup three games in, right? You lose two in a row. You, you want to see if you can get some consistency and see if you can make this work. Now we're four in a row. I don't think it made sense from the start, but it was going well for the first three games. But four losses in a row, I think it's time. Even when we were winning games, it was glaringly obvious you needed more spacing around Cade. Sasser over the last few games, and Monty has praised him post game the last couple of games, has been really solid on both ends. So I think just right now, while you're waiting on everybody to get healthy, do it. <laughs> That's my take. Yeah, like he, I think he had a career high in points, and he had like 21 or 22 points. Uh, yep. game before against the Pelicans, he had 18 or 19 points or something like that. The more I watch him, the more he just looks so under control, and you can tell he played college for more than one season. Yep, uh, and I think that's really helped him at the next level. And he, he even saw it tonight a little bit like. Cade could kind of free up. He didn't have three, four guys on him because he right. could pass the ball to Sasser. And the, the floor kind of opened up a little bit more because now you have a guy that I think he's shooting over 50% from three. I don't know how long that's going to last. <laughs> right, right. Uh, with more attempts and obviously going up against, you know, starting units versus bench units. But I think it's worth a shot. You know, he's six one, six two, scrappy defender. Yeah. Uh, There's instances where he was trying to check KD and, Katie's like, man, who is this little guy? Like, <laughs> right, honestly, right. like, I, I just love his toughness. And yeah. I, don't, I don't think it would hurt to put him in the starting lineup. I, I really don't. I mean, you, you get Cade, the floor spacing he needs, and you obviously have a pit bull and a Sar Thompson out there discarding everybody. Right. I don't right. really think, you know, having him and Killian out there together helps Cade's case in terms of just spacing because we, we've seen he, he gets into – you know, the paint, and the, it's just swarmed. Like, the defenses are just yeah get, getting the ball. Kate's may, making, like, really, like, bonehead, like, one, one hand passes. You're like, dude, what are you doing? Right, right. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you there. Especially, I mean, here's the thing. It's like, if your end goal is playing, which I think internally it probably is, even though they know it may not be realistic. Hopefully it is. That'd be great. But at a certain point, I mean, I know we're really early in the season, but you can't stumble onto a five, six, seven, eight game losing streak. We got a tough schedule coming up too. Yeah. Like, I think you need to like wins have slipped you by. You know, we have two winnable games. Pelicans. Um, I'm blanking on the other one now, and I can't think of anything. Um, but I think re- oh, and the Blazers. We should have won that yeah. game. But I think you just make that we're seven games in. Make the starting lineup change. Sasser's earned it. I don't think you should view it as a demotion for Killian because, again, he's played solid even though nobody wants to see him in the starting lineup. But it's clearly not working. The defense first lineup with zero spacing is clearly not working. You need to find a middle ground, and I think Sasser right now is the middle ground. Not only that, I I think his ability to just – his one-on-one game and his isolation game I think is something that, well, maybe, you know – Kate doesn't have it that night. You can kind of re- rely on him. I mean, he was getting past Nurkic tonight. He was getting past a lot of his defenders. Right. Because he's got, he's got such a, a game where it reminds me of Terry Rozier a lot. Like, when I watch him, that's who I see. I just see a lot of Terry Rozier just offensively, yeah. just able to break his man down and get by him or hit a really big three-pointer when they need it. Yep. I know, like, I've seen your tweets. You're like, we need to start Sasser. Like, I'm with you. I think it yeah. makes sense. I think I've seen enough of the, you know, the, the Killian Hayes next to Kate experiment. I'm right. okay with him just running the second unit because I think he would flourish more because there's more shooting out there. Agreed. Totally. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad we're on the same page. Though. I, I think a lot of <laughs> yeah. Pistons fans are too. I think they're kind of like, we, we can't lose yeah. five games in a row because you got the Warriors tomorrow. Right. Right, exactly. Right. And look, I mean, I, I would suggest starting Ivy, but I know that Monty's not going to do that right now. But I, I, I do think that, uh, you know, 
But again, like we were talking about earlier, like I understand what Monty's trying to do with Ivy, and I hope it it plays out how it can and it pushes Ivy more, especially on the defensive end. We'll see how it plays out, but yeah, I, I think as of right now, your best option is probably Sasser. Which who knew coming into the season that that would be that? Yeah, like I, I know um, pro- some fans probably aren't going to like that he's skipping over Ivy again. Right. Um, but I, I think what I would say to those fans is Sasser defensively is doing what Monty wants him to do. And I, yep. I think that's why uh, he would probably get a nod. I mean, he, he in the beginning of the season, Monty was kind of leaning him in maybe five, ten minutes. Now he's getting yeah. like with Burks being out, he's getting like basically six man minutes. Yeah. Um, and he's contributing like he, he's not afraid of the moment. I mean, dropping 20 points in the Suns is nothing to sneeze at either. Yeah, for sure. And he looked good doing it. He just, I mean, his confidence is through the roof. I like, I, every time he shoots, I think it's going in. Yeah, same here. He had a three pointer tonight. I thought it was going in. It did. I was like, oh, damn, it didn't go in. Wow. Um, yeah. I, I did have a Celtics fan quote tweet me and uh, a highlight earlier tonight. Like, I can't believe we passed up on this guy and gave Peyton Pritchard an extension. <laughs> so, f- from a Celtics fan saying that, I, I, I know we got a good pick in Sasser. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, Troy. I mean, look, Troy, for the most part, when it comes to draft picks, he's pretty much knocked them out of the park. I mean, we'll ignore his first draft and go from there. But Sasser, yeah. I mean, look, he had to trade up to get him. He got his guy. I was a little critical on draft night because I'm like, why are you trading up six picks? He got his guy. I'm glad he got his guy. Yeah, I, I honestly thought like if Whitmore wasn't taken by the Rockets, I thought that was going to be their guy. I was yep. just like, oh, maybe Whitmore will slip to 25. No, it didn't happen. But I- I'm happy with the Sasser pick. I really am. He's looking yeah. like one of the, the better draft picks so far in this draft class. I know it's Agreed. only seven games in, but. Right, um, right, right. But he looks exactly. good. He looks like he belongs. Yeah. Which, especially he, he, this early, you can, you know, you can lean on. Yeah, it doesn't look like a rookie at all.